guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, financial, time, location, health freedom. And in that light, I'm always interviewing entrepreneurs, successful individuals, picking their brains and sharing those insights with the audience. So today we have a uh, entrepreneur at heart, Anmal Singh. He's the founder of Live Traders, and he's going to talk to us all about trading psychology, uh, trading success. It's going to be a great discussion, and I'm looking forward to it. So Anmal, welcome. welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, I know we travel similar paths. You know, we started our careers in high-paid industries and then went off on our own, did our own thing, created our own uh, success. So tell us more about your story and journey, and we'll get right to it. Uh, sure. So I uh, started off as a stock market trader. I was uh, trading for a firm on Wall Street, uh, just you know, as a prop proprietary trader where I used to trade the company funds for an exchange of percentage of profits. So I started my career there as a trader and then uh, eventually kind of worked my way up in helping other traders in the firm uh, deal with psychological behavioral issues that arise when you know high stakes are on the line. As you can imagine, when you're risking and trading with large sums of money, it can really mess up your psychology and bring out the best in you and also the worst in you. So I started coaching uh, traders and investors. Uh, been doing that since 2010, and in 2015 is when I branched out on my own and I started uh, LiveTraders.com, which is uh, now an advisory company as well as we provide training. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, again, you know, for the listeners out there, this is not financial advice. This is just to, you know, spoke your interest and um, really provide some education, some entertainment information. Uh, but tell us, um, one is, uh, you know, trading large sums of money, you know, probably self sabotage you see self-sabotage, you probably see imposter syndrome, all of these. Um, tell us um, more like the number one key when you're dealing with those sums of money. Right. So, uh, you know, research has been done trading releases, the same hormones that you get from gambling or from doing any sorts of illegal substances or <laughs> even sex for that matter, right? It releases the same hormones of dopamine and serotonin. And uh, the thing is, when in other activities, those are only released when you're actually doing those things. With trading, they get released in real time every single day. So you have to learn really how to control those uh, spikes in dopamine and serotonin. Uh, so I think uh, trading is one of those businesses where, yes, as you you absolutely said it correctly, it brings out the self sabotage, and uh, it brings out all the worst you know baggage that you might have, or all the best in you. People's egos come up uh, because before coming into trading, a lot of people have been successful in their other businesses or their jobs, so they by default think, well, I was an executive, so I'm going to be able to do it. But market treats everybody the same way. Uh, it doesn't really care about our background or where we come from. It is what it is. So it's one of those things where you have to really keep your ego in check. Yeah. Interesting. Now you talk about different things. Um, so when you talk about, uh, so you talk about finding your passion is irrelevant. Tell us about that and what do you mean by that? Yeah. So what I really mean is a lot of people focus too much on passion, right? Oh, what is my passion? I'm not passionate. And they become passionate about not being passionate about anything, you know? So I think passion really comes with skill, being you being good at something. Because if you're good at something, naturally, you'll get passionate about it, right? Rarely are we ever passionate about things we're bad at, right? Like, I'm not passionate about basketball. Even if I tried, I could not play. No matter how passionate I get, I'm not going to make it in that career, right? Because there's limitations. So I think people need to first focus on developing a skill, getting really good at something. And naturally, when you're good at it, passion will naturally follow and you'll become passionate at it. So I, I I always tell people, get good at something and bring the passion to it rather than focusing on passion first. Because uh, again, you're not going to be passionate when you first start out doing anything. That's quite interesting because, uh, you know, I started out medical career and uh, I got very good at it because I was I was able to take exams. You know, I could 
figure out what the right answer was. Um, but it wasn't my passions, you know, and I ultimately found, you know, what I was good at and what I love to do. One thing is, uh, one thing interesting is uh, you talk about stepping into being your your word. What does that mean? So what I mean by that is, you know, like being a person of integrity, meaning, you know, doing what you said you're going to do and then doing it when you said you're going to do it. So like you, you being your word. So whatever, like the words that come out of your mouth, you're actually a living into that word rather than just saying things. I think a lot of people just say things for the sake of saying it. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start next week. I'm going to do this next month. And next month you ask them, how's it going? You know, they're still exactly where they started. They haven't done anything because they were just words. And what happens is, you know, when you don't listen to your own self or you say something and you don't follow through, unconsciously, your mind's like, this guy is, you know, full of it. He's not going to really do anything, right? And that slowly seeks into lower self-esteem. You start feeling bad about yourself. You start feeling guilty, start being down on yourself. And uh, I think that's not a healthy habit. So I think you being your word is basically, you know, be conscious of what you're saying and then uh, take action on what you're really saying and deliver the results as per your word. So being a person of integrity. Yeah, it's all, yeah, reputation, uh, do carry out what you say you're going to do. Next thing is, okay, so here's the thing. Um, you know, I know, you know, crypto digital assets in a winter now, you know, had one of the biggest firms, you know, crash, you know, everybody's, you know, tell us more about what your thoughts are on um, this digital assets, the technology, where it's going. Yeah, so I think the technology is here to stay. The technology isn't going anywhere, but uh, people need to realize the prices obviously fluctuate. And they, you know, we trade based on technical analysis a lot more than fundamental analysis. So based on technicals, uh, it was no surprise, really. We actually have a video all the way from December of this year when I said, hey, Bitcoin's probably going to be 14, 15,000. So technically, it was I could see the, all of this coming. I think a lot of technical traders could see it coming. I think a lot of people buy into the hopium. They get greedy. Now it's going to go. It's going to go. Nothing goes up forever. I mean, look at history, right? If Amazon stock can be down 50% this year, well, then cryptos are way more riskier. So they're obviously going to drop a lot more. Uh, but cryptos aren't going anywhere. Uh, but there's going to be, I think this is a good thing for the whole crypto markets, because at the end of this uh, crypto winter, there's going to be a few uh, blockchains that are still going to be left and thriving. And then it's going to eliminate all the bad players. The same thing happened in uh, 2000 dot com bubble, where a lot of these stocks, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they all drop 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. Right. And then if you remember out of that 2000 bubble, came the few emerging winners like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and then the rest of the dot-com companies went bust. So the same thing is going to happen with the crypto markets as well. Uh, I think there's only primarily, in my opinion, there's going to be three or four cryptocurrencies remaining, which is going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then Algorand. Uh, those are going to be the three currencies, I think, in my books that are going to thrive and make it out of this winter. Uh, couldn't say the same for anything else. But uh, personally for me, I'm not really involved. I don't own any Bitcoin. I don't own any uh, Ethereum. I do own a lot of Algorand, which is a smaller cryptocurrency uh, that are, in my research, that's going to be the one. But it's going to take until 2025, 20, 2030 uh, to get anywhere. I think it's going to take uh, two to three years before any of these things come back. Yeah. Would, um, that's, that's, you know, it's quite interesting, you know, especially, um, you know, you're right about the technology is going to, that's the infrastructure, but, and then, I talked to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of my friends are entrepreneurs in this area, and they're saying the development and the pro number of projects is just accelerating. And, you know, like I said, um, like FTX and all of those, like Luna and all those give a bad name, but those are bad actors. You know, there's actually people who actually really focus on creating value and, you know, doing the right thing. Um, you know, it's just, you know, the media is portrayed as as such um, yeah the same thing happened in 2000s you know like uh when there was so many dot-com companies a lot of them were eliminated and then a few were left uh, this is still like internet internet in its very early stages right so crypto is kind of like the internet in very early stages it's still very very early like it's not going to be fully adopted i don't think till 2025 or beyond uh, but I think for people who have a five ten year vision they're going to be pretty happy as long as they invest in the right projects um but there's a lot of other so-called coins which aren't going to make it through this winter yeah quite interesting tell us more about your um your uh company uh, what you do now live traders it looks like you have a book prepping for success and then uh tell us more how you know more about that sure so live traders uh is uh, something i started in 2015 as a way for me to help uh, other aspiring traders and investors 
uh, using the same tools, technology that you know made me a successful trader, how I learned how to trade. So I teamed up with actually my mentor who taught me how to trade. And then we started live traders together because uh, I was like, hey, this, I'm your case study right here. You know, it's worked for me. It could work for a lot of other people. So why don't we try to turn this into a curriculum that people can actually learn and follow? So live traders, we provide, you know, courses, training, education for those looking to learn how to trade, as well as other newsletters and different subscriptions for people who are actively into the, the market. So one of them is like I live stream every single day. So win or lose, like I share my screen, my portfolio, win or lose, they get to see it in real time. So for me, it's like a it's like a sport. I perform every day <laughs> and, uh, you know, win or lose, they'll get to see it in real time. So that's kind of what we do at Live Traders. Um, and then Prepping for Success is a book that has nothing to do with trading. Uh, I wrote it for myself as uh, kind of notes to myself that these are the things that I need to do uh, to, you know, live a successful life. And then, you know, I showed it to a few people and they were like, you know what, this actually is a really good book. Like you should publish it. And I was like, I don't know. It's meant for just for myself as my notes. Uh, but then eventually I put it together in a book format and turned it into uh, what is now Prepping for Success, uh, 10 Keys for Making It in Life. So I dive into the success keys that people need to follow to live a healthy and successful and wealthy life and make it in any business or endeavor that they're trying to pursue. So I published this in uh, 2018. And so far, it's done uh, extremely well. I'm super happy with that. Uh you know, fascinating discussion, uh, you know, you know, it looks like you've taken all of the um, traits to make you successful on Wall Street. That's not an easy feat. And, uh, you know, and then you went out on your own. And then so in the interesting thing is, you know, investing, business, finance, all of these uh, can incorporate all different aspects. And um, tell us people how people can find you, contact you, follow you and reach out to you. Yeah, I think the best methods would be Instagram or Twitter. Uh, my username on both of those are the same. And it's a weird username. You know, but people always ask me, well, why do you have this username? And it's because I just started, uh, you know, when my accounts way back then with those usernames. And then they became popular. So I was like, I don't want to change it now because people wouldn't find me. Uh, but the username is Delta90. It's a trading terminology. It's uh, Delta90. It's all spelled out. D-E-L-T-A-N-I-N-E-T-Y. So it's the same username on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, that would probably be the best way for uh, people to connect with me. And obviously, if they're interested in learning more about trading, they can download our free courses and free ebooks on LiveTraders.com uh, to learn more about trading. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, um, and Wall's resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to check out that book. I might check it out. It's probably on Amazon and, um, you know, check out his website. Um, and thanks for a very insightful discussion. And um, uh, thanks for coming on to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. Always good chatting. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week